we are back 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 with another versus video your boy young mustard is here to compare two players and tell y'all who i believe is better and as you can see from the title the thumbnail today we're going to do chris paul versus trey young now, if you are new to the channel, you probably don't know how I do my versus videos. I'm going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of one player, do the same for the other. And at the end, I'm going to give my final verdict. And also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for post notifications. I mean, come on now. What's taking you so long? Join the mustard gang. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be really fun here. But without further ado, let's kick things off with Treyway himself, Trey Young. Young finds his spot young on the floater puts it in trey young with a miraculous shot ice trader gang man when i tell y'all trey young is one of my more favorite players i'm not joking this is a guy that i was very critical of on this channel if you remember i talked about him before the season and i said bro you got a lot to prove you put up your numbers luca's already winning y'all were traded for each other a lot of pressure now coming into the last season because you have a pretty good roster on your hands and you have to start winning eventually like this is your third year you talked about them getting additions they got you some help so i would like to see you win and boy did he blow me away by not only getting them to the playoffs but getting to the conference finals and not only in that playoff run but throughout the entire year he really showed me a lot about him as a player so let's just dive right into what he does great right right off the bat we already know he's one of the best scorers in the league as essentially since he's come in the nba he's been a 20 point per game scorer and not only is he a good score especially from behind the three-point line we all know how good of a shooter he is but he is also good at scoring in a multitude of different ways like from the mid-range game he shot like 45 percent and also he can take it to the rim and finish there but we all know his size can kind of affect his percentages at the rim though i do believe with time he will gain more muscle and his body will grow into a bigger frame and i do believe his percentages will go up and let's not forget his ability to get to the free throw line and sure he did foul bait a lot last year but nonetheless you get it how you get it and Trey Young he was getting it pause as a free throw shooter but now that we've addressed what he does as a scorer let's talk about his other strength and that is his playmaking and IQ Trey Young since he's entered the league has been one of the more smarter players in the NBA as he's been one of the best passes and playmakers in the league this is a guy with the ability to not only score on a multitude of levels break you down as a shot creator off the dribble or even spotting up on very rare occasions but he can also create for others due to the attention he draws from the defense if you go back to the playoffs especially against the Knicks he was drawing a lot of double teams and because of his high IQ he was consistently able to find the open man whether it was on a cut a lob an open three-pointer on the perimeter he was able to do it and I believe his ability to pass out of the double teams and also combine that with this pick and roll savviness because he's great in the pick and roll just ask John Collins and Clint Capella they'll tell you why when you wrap both of those things up in one you have one of the best playmakers not only in basketball but arguably a top 10 to top 5 playmaker in the league and sure a lot of you guys may be saying there's no way he's in the top 5 look I'm not saying he is but he's definitely in that conversation especially considering what we just saw him do against some of the best defenses in basketball just with playmaking alone let's not forget the Knicks and the 76ers were top five defenses in the NBA last year and Trey Young was able to torch them a new one not only as a scoring threat but as a playmaker as well now unfortunately there are two sides of the ball there's offense and there's defense and as it pertains to Trey Young if the game was only about offense he'd be arguably the best player in the game but unfortunately there is this thing called defense and Trey Young is just not that great at it he's easily arguably the worst defender not only on his team but you could argue he's the worst starting point guard in the league for real he's in that conversation because he is a terrible defensive player a liability even on that end and had it not been for the growth in guys like deandre hunter on the defensive side of the ball or the addition of clint capella i really question how impactful trey would be as a player because he would be attacked way more on the defensive side of the ball and wouldn't have the bodies to be able to hide him but another thing that i really find annoying when it comes to trey young is the lack of movement without the ball because there are times where other players actually majority of the time if not all of the time where other players like bogdanovich or let's say a cam reddish or deandre hunter whoever has the ball 
Trey Young just won't move. And for a guy that's the shooting threat that he allegedly is in the NBA, then he should be able to move without the ball. And hopefully with time and more additions to the Hawks roster, I hope he gets better at that because that is a skill that you need to have, especially if you're going to play the way that he plays because that play style is only going to get you so far. Just ask James Harden. But regardless, Trey Way is still a very good player. We all know what he's capable of. Like I said, one of the best scorers and playmakers in basketball. When you bundle that up, you have a top 20 player in this league. But you know who else is a top 20 player? Yes, you guessed correctly, it's Chris Paul CP3. So let's now transition to the point god himself, Chris Paul. Hit him with multiple crossovers. Giannis, really good job. And then the fade. What can I say about Chris Paul that isn't already known? One of the best passes in the league? Still? Check. One of the best mid-range scores in the league? Still? Check. One of the best leaders in the NBA as well? Yep, you got that down because the media reminds us of it every single second. I mean, hell, that's why he was an MVP candidate, right? <laughs> really blows my mind they tried to push that narrative but nonetheless chris paul is still one of the best players and point guards that we have in today's league for the reasons i just named chris paul is still one of the more effective and impactful players in this league as though he definitely isn't the player that he used to be back in his earlier clipper days in the hornets era i still do believe that a guy like chris paul is very capable of doing everything that he used to do just not as effective he's a good finisher at the rim for his size he's a good mid-range shooter we all know he's one of the league's best and at the three-point line not only can he pull up from three by shot creation but he's also able to spot up and play off the ball but still to this day one of the more underrated aspects of his game has to be his defense because sure everybody knows chris paul's a good defender but i don't think people know the extent of how good of a defender he is he is a great communicator on that side of the ball and his impact on defense has been felt in a lot of players' careers, if you look at a guy like Shea Gilgis Alexander, a guy like Dennis Schroeder, and even right now with guys like Devin Booker, Mikel Bridges, and I'm not saying that some of those guys weren't good defenders before they got Chris Paul on their team, but Chris Paul's impact on the defensive side of the ball definitely rubbed off on those players. And as it pertains to things rubbing off on players, that brings us to the obvious leadership. And look, I know this thing has been played to death, but Chris Paul is an all-time great leader. We have to admit that. His impact on teams is undeniable. You can go back to his days with the Hornets. Look at what they were with him and look at what they were without him. Hell, look at his time with the Los Angeles Clippers. Yes, the Clippers are good now, but before the Clippers, they were a joke. Let's just be honest. And they still kind of are a joke. I get it with the memes, but Chris Paul is the reason that they're even in the position to get a guy like Kawhi Leonard, getting a guy like Paul George via trade, Chris Paul put them on the map as a good team in the league. And I'm not saying that Chris Paul did it all by himself. He had other guys to help him along the way, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, etc. But despite that, we still all know that Chris Paul was not only the best player, but was also the most impactful player on those teams as they did not have very many ball handlers. And because of their undersized backcourt, that will leave Chris Paul to be tasked with all of the playmaking responsibilities and always guarding the best perimeter player. And then you move on to his Houston Rockets years and yes the Rockets were good without Chris Paul I'll admit that but going to the conference finals and being just one game away from the NBA finals after winning 65 games in that regular season going up against KD's Warriors and the games that they lost after being up 3-2 were without Chris Paul I think it's very obvious that Chris Paul's impact on that team was crystal clear and then you move on to teams like Oklahoma City and Phoenix and it's very clear Chris Paul's impact on those squads so I don't even have to explain that so when it comes to CP3 there are just a couple of weaknesses in his game because he's a pretty well-rounded player but this is a versus video so I gotta talk about those weaknesses let's kick things off with injuries Chris Paul is a fairly injury prone player and I understand the diet change up as it's helped him stay healthy over the past couple of years but considering he had a shoulder injury in the first round that definitely hampered him that just proved to me that an injury can come at any point in time to a guy like Chris Paul and for someone like Chris Paul who has the injury history that he already has to his name combine that with the fact that he's getting up there in age he's approaching 40 yeah durability is definitely something that you have to consider and aside from durability another thing that I get very annoyed when I watch Chris Paul is the lack of aggressiveness in situations he's supposed to be aggressive if you go back to that NBA finals 
there were so many times I was asking myself, where is Chris Paul? And look, I get it, Devin Booker's right there, but if you are CP3, and you see that a guy like D-Book is struggling, or you see that a guy like Blake Griffin was struggling, or you see that a guy like Shea or whoever it was that was struggling next to you as your co-star, you have to take it upon yourself to step up and fulfill that role, or at least try. And there are a lot of times where Chris Paul just does not do that. But I'ma play this clip of Isaiah Thomas talking about Chris Paul, and trust me, by the end of it, you will 100% understand my point. I don't know if Chris has gotten to this place of being safe. Um, when he first came into the league, you, you mentioned Chris Paul and championship together. You know, th those two words went together. I, I have not heard him speak of winning a championship now in a couple of years. I think he's fallen into this assist to turnover ratio thing where, you know, Chris is a very safe player right now. And statistically, you know, he maxes out in every box. However, I don't see Chris going outside of himself, outside of those boxes to take extraordinary risk. And, you know, this assist to turnover ratio, if you look back at some of the, the, the best point guards to ever do it in our league, you know, we, we generally had three to four turnovers a night because we took risks. Stockton took risks. Magic Johnson took risks. I took risk out on the floor. You know, to play a game where you have only one turnover or zero turnovers, that means you're playing relatively safe. You're playing good basketball, but, you, you know, you, you're playing safe. And, you know, you, you, right now, Chris is at the point now, he's got to push past safe. He's got to push past the numbers where he can go into the locker room and say, well, I got 20, I got nine, I got three, and then, and then. Hey, I did my job. No, you got to push past safe. But nonetheless, though, he's still a great player with a really good postseason this year. Stepped up in a lot of big games, primarily that game six versus the Clippers. And honestly, despite his flaws with the injuries, the lack of aggressiveness at times, he's still one of the more well-rounded point guards of all time, even at this stage in his career very few flaws honestly you don't see that with a lot of players but that then brings us to the final verdict who does young mustard think is better chris paul or trey young and like i said earlier before in my videos this is close so do not get mad but i'm gonna go with trey young and the reason i'm going with trey young is because i just believe trey is more talented than chris paul and yes i understand that cp3 is a better defender but offensively speaking i think trey is better at everything other than the mid-range obviously but as a playmaker i think trey's better as a shooter i think trey's better and sure the playmaking is definitely debatable i'm not going to be mad if you say chris paul is a better playmaker but trey young is coming off of an all-time great playmaking season it's not to take credit away from chris paul as a playmaker but i just believe that trey's a better one and as far as what trey does offensively he's just a far better scoring threat and combine that with his playmaking ability i just don't care about the defensive gap because by that logic is steph curry better than a lot of these guys hell no i mean i understand the argument of being the better two-way player but something has to be said about being the better number one guy but a that's just my opinion if you disagree let me know down below in the comment section i will interact with as many people as possible don't forget to drop a like on this video subscribe and press the bell for post notifications follow me on social media the links are down below in the description box this is your boy young muster signing out y'all have a blessed day peace